name is Theo. I'm here to inform you about a large but often ignored issue. This issue is the trafficking and prostitution of Native American women. I'm no expert, but I do know that this is violating the human rights laid out in the Declaration of Human Rights published by the UN. To help teach you more about this, I've acquired the help of an expert from a local research center. So what, what would be your definition of sex trafficking? Well, I would use, in our research, we use the Minnesota statute definition of sex trafficking, uh, which is third party facilitation of any type of prostitution. So the federal definition is the use of force, fraud, or coercion to recruit, transport, harbor, obtain somebody for the use of commercial sex. Mm -hmm. So the definitions are really comparable, but the Minnesota statute is a little bit broader. So it's any type of third party who's exploiting and profiting off of another person for prostitution. How big of an issue is sex trafficking among Native communities? Well, one thing we do know is that the Native American community is disproportionately affected by sex trafficking compared to other racial and ethnic groups. So that's something that comes up, for example, in arrest records when adult women who have been arrested for prostitution, you compare the racial data for those women um, and Native Americans disproportionately represent those who have been arrested for prostitution. And that's from both the Hennepin County as well as Duluth. We've seen, looked at that data and the population's around 2%, but then the data shows about 50% of them are being arrested. Yeah. So that to us indicates that this is a huge problem for that community. And then from the other research we've done with our qualitative interviews, we hear a lot about how young Native American women who have been um, recruited from the reservation into sex trafficking, as well as people who have been recruited from urban communities as well. Only about 1% of the U.S. population is Native American. However, an enormous amount of trafficking cases involve Native American women. For example, in South Dakota, more than 50% of cases over the past five years involved Native victims. Why do you think Native Americans are so easily targeted? Well, I think prostitution and sex trafficking in general, part of the core issues with those, um, with those crimes or with those phenomenon really looks at the vulnerability of where the person is. And so sex trafficking affects people who, for the most part, affects people who are living in poverty, uh, affects people who are economically unstable or precariously housed, people who've been involved in intergenerational prostitution, as well as we see um, disproportionate amounts of racial minorities. And so in Minnesota, there's a disproportionate amount of African American as well as Native American who have been trafficked for sex. And a lot of that really boils down to issues of racial justice, to racism, to discrimination, marginalization, and how that intersects with poverty. As Christina just explained, the vulnerability is caused mainly by the poor living conditions that the Native Americans are forced to live in. Um, but that's not the only reason. Uh, Native Americans have a vast history of abuse, some of the earliest being their being forced into boarding schools and punished for practicing their culture. Even now, Native Americans experience sexual assault at a rate of 2.5 times greater than any other race. What is being done by authorities to combat this issue? There's a lot of things happening right now in Minnesota, and Minnesota has been on the forefront of a lot of action against um, to combat sex trafficking. So just for example, we have a statewide task force, and we also have some regional task forces that are a combination of social service providers, faith communities, law enforcement agencies, who all come together and talk um, quarterly to, to um, talk about cases and to collaborate their actions. What does your organization do to combat this issue? Yeah, um, so I work at UROC, the Urban Research Outreach and Engagement Center. We're at the University of Minnesota, but we're a place-based research center located in North Minneapolis. 
And the research that we do, uh, we do community engaged research. So all of the research we do with community partners and for the benefit of community. And some of the research that Lauren has done has actually been able to help create the safe harbor legislation through, she did a benefit cost study that helped um, show how primary prevention and it is, uh, ends up cost saving taxpayers a lot of money. Um, and then the, you know, the current study, a lot of the work that we do, we really hope that there is a social impact and that's why we do it. We create research to raise awareness, to um, bring an empirical lens into things that people, information that people know and need to know more about. Researchers like Christina do a lot of work to help eliminate these rights violations. Not only does research inform people, but it also can have influence on legislation. Now you may be wondering, what can I do to fight the marginalization of Native people? Well, you know what? I asked Christina the very same question. Let's see what she has to say. It's a really good question. I think there's several things that everybody should and, and can do. The first is around the demand issue, right? So if people weren't willing to pay money to have sex with somebody, then there wouldn't be a business venture opportunity for a traffic to try to exploit someone. So one thing can be to make a decision to not purchase somebody for, for money. So that's one thing, reduce the demand. Another thing is really looking at, I believe this issue is related um, most specifically to racism and poverty. So I believe everyone should uh, take an effort to put racial equity and racial justice into every aspect of their work because that really affects sex trafficking down the line. So being able to look at um, how do we um, create increased diversity within our schools, school boards, um, but working on racial equity I think is the most important thing that people can be doing for sex trafficking as well as um, reducing poverty wages, uh, increasing MFIP benefits, right now MFIP benefits, which is what we call welfare, is barely enough to pay a rent or get by, so uh, we don't have good supports for people who are living in poverty, and I think that would be something that people can advocate to their legislators about, they can find other organizations that are doing that work, write letters, support them. Um, and then the other big thing I think for high school students is to pay attention to how social marginalization affects other people. So uh, not to bully other people, don't call girls sluts, don't make fun of other people. All of that kind of builds into somebody's mental health and well-being yeah. in ways that can make somebody vulnerable to becoming trafficked. Now that we've learned more about this issue, here's some simple things you can do. One, don't buy prostitutes it's i mean it shouldn't be it shouldn't be hard uh i shouldn't have to say it but uh it's a it's a demand and supply thing just don't do it okay that's good number two don't be a jerk calling names as christina said slut you know etc don't do that that's rude do the best you can to provide equity and last but not least, vote for legislation in favor of equity, you know, such as welfare, increasing welfare, um, just things like that. Uh, voting for legislation can make a big change. 